Hello everyone, and welcome to Everyday Parenting and Faith, week four. I'm Karen Manton, and thank you so much for joining us here at We Want More on this parenting journey. For the last several weeks, we've talked about a number of topics that Dr. Kasnan has mentioned. The importance of praise, looking at the positives versus the negatives, trying to shape positive behaviors in our children. And I have to be honest, at first my thoughts were, this is not rocket science. But doing versus saying are two totally different things. And I kind of laughed when I thought about James and how he said to be doers of the word versus hearers. Um, you know, Bruce mentioned about identity and the importance of our identity moving from our head to our heart. That our identity is who God says we are and who we are in Christ versus how well our kids are, how well behaved they are, whether they get into a good college or how we compare to other parents. And we also talked about shame and the importance of noticing that the antidote of shame is acceptance and how our kids almost wear around their neck this sign that says, I long to be accepted. I long to belong. I long to be significant in this world. And we as parents have this opportunity to create an environment where they can be fully accepted for who they are and not the type of grades they get. And it's so hard because we all are raised in this performance um, type environment that we grew up in and we carry that into our parenting. But I was so excited that um, Dr. Kasdan spends the last week talking about nurturing environments. And he points out a number of things that foster a nurtured environment such as good communication. Um, he talks about monitoring our kids. He talks about being flexible as parents. And he goes on and says a number of things. And communication, I would say, has definitely been regularly at the top of our list in our parenting of what's changed the most in our house. And the biggest bang for the buck, for lack of a better word. Because once we started communicating to our children and opening our hearts more, and, um, and I think when I think of communication, I'm talking about connecting to our children's heart. You know, we do that through empathy, through helping them be seen, I'll at times grab my daughter and I'll look at her in the face and say, I love you because of who you are. I don't love you because of the grades you get. I don't love you for anything that you're going to do, but just for who you are. And at times our communication, I will say, is broken. I'll yell. I'll lose my temper. I've given my tool, my kids tools that are, um, one thing I tell them to say is yellow light. If mom's losing it, just say yellow light and I'll know. Um, because I come from a background of yelling where it was normal in our family. I come from, I had siblings. I was a youngest child and I had siblings that were 10, nine and 10 years older than me. You told me to get out of here. We don't care what you have to say. So, and that fostered this feeling of that, my voice doesn't matter. Nobody cares what I have to say. And I brought those things into my parenting and um, they're battles that I continually fight and I don't want my kids to grow up feeling that way. So one thing I, I will say with empathy is really I think at the heart of connecting to your child's heart is telling them, look, I get what you're going through and makes sense. It makes sense that you feel this way. And just the other day before school, I was rushing around the kitchen trying to get things done. And my son came in and my daughter and I were having a conversation. And at some point between packing lunch and making breakfast, I forgot what we were talking about. And I'm starting to get this look from my daughter and it's not going away. And at some point I say, what, what? And she says, you did it again, mom. You forgot about me and you go right to Carter because he's your favorite and you always care about what he has to say and not me. And she said it just like that. And a part of me started welling up and I'm thinking, are you kidding me? I'm doing breakfast. I have a hundred things going on right now. Come on. But I stopped and I took a deep breath 
and I walked around the corner and I, I grabbed her, I put my hands on her shoulder and I said, Alexis, I'm so sorry, honey, but I've got a lot of things going on and I didn't mean to ignore you. I'm so sorry. And she starts to cry and she just broke down and starts crying. And so I just hugged her in that moment. And I said, I could totally see why you would feel sad right now and feel like I, I love Carter more than you and I see him more than you and I, he's my favorite. It totally makes sense, honey. And she just said, mm hmm and she kept crying. And then at some point she just stops and she sits up and I got to go brush my teeth and just storms away. And, you know, I just share that story because we're going to blow it. We are parents. We're broken. We're going to lose it. And I feel like apologizing to our children in those moments or taking a breath just helps them pull them into our heart. And it helps us connect to like thinking about them and thinking about how they're feeling in that moment. And empathy is not something that is easy to do in the moment. It's something that takes practice and that I would recommend doing after a blowout or at evening, at, at bedtime to talk to your children more or do it in the car. I, I'll often ask my kids, what do you love about, about mommy? What do I do that you love? And what do you wish that I would change? And across the board, I always get yelling. I wish you'd stop yelling. So that right there is like a, uh, in my chest because I know that yelling is a form of abuse. And I definitely feel like it's something that I have, I'm probably 80% on the battle of it, of having it won. Um, but giving my kids tools, apologizing has really helped mitigate that. And Dr. Kazan also talked about misconceptions and misconceptions to me, as I started reading them, you know, he talked about punishment and how punishment brings back, um, you know, disassociation Our kids pull back from us. They don't want to be with you. Um, and it makes total sense, right? You know, punishment has to do with fear. And, and I find myself often yelling at to my son, get out of the bathroom or I'm going to take your iPad away or we have to hurry up. You have to get to bed or, or you're not going to no no movies for the rest of the week. And I'll just blurt out punishment after punishment to try to get them to do what I, I want them to do in that moment. And isn't that so not appropriate because it's going to give me that it's going to get them to obey for, for just that moment. It's not going to bring long-term obedience and skills that I want to see. And to me, it just, it just screamed grace. Lord, I need your grace. I so desperately need the father's grace. And I just love that we have it, that he says, Hey, come sit with me. Come be with me. I know you're not perfect. I know you're going to blow it. I know you're going to have wounds and things from your past that you are going to bring into your parenting but it's okay because I still love you. And there's a scripture in Psalms that says, children are a gift from the Lord. And I remember reading that when my kids were little and at times saying, God, I don't want this gift. And just being at my wits end at times. And, you know, I look at that scripture now and what it hit me was, you know, they're a gift. And, you know, he saw what I'm gonna say to them tomorrow. He's seen what I'm going to say to them in five years and 10 years. And he also knows what I've said to them yesterday and these other years. And he also knew my background and what I brought into this parenting whirlwind. And he still said, Karen, I'm giving you a gift of Carter and I'm giving you a gift of Alexis. And he says the same thing to you, that you are so worthy to be a parent. And I just want to encourage you that you are more loved than you can possibly know and more forgiven than you can understand. And I just love that we get to have a father and have a relationship with the Lord to come to in this parenting journey. So thank you so much for joining us on these talks. And um, I hope to see you soon on some future parenting discussions that we may have or we want more.